Mr. Joe Kujo. Hello my people, so today I'll be explaining every function in the video config which will educate you guys to tweak your video configs with more confidence to improve FPS and performance. Low-end and high-end PC users will benefit from this video, so no one's left out. Of course, I'm not a genius in any way, so if I say anything that's wrong, you guys can correct me in the comments below. We're all here to get the most out of Apex, so it doesn't hurt to help each other out. But no need to worry though, because I've done tedious research on each function to make sure I'm at least 99% right. So anyways, the first function is clgibAllow. This function deals with rendering structures that break apart in pieces, like doors and rampart walls. Therefore, you can suffer from a small performance drop in these situations if you have Gibbs on. Its values are 1 for high and 0 for low. The next functions are CL Particle Fallback Base and CL Particle Fallback Multiplayer. So a lot of players always set these to 0 thinking they're getting more performance when that's actually not the case because these functions actually tell the computer to fall back to cheaper effects on their load. So if there's a lot of things going on on the screen, this actually helps you out by maintaining a more stable FPS in high action situations. Of course, if you have a cracked PC and you want the best quality and visibility, you can set these to 0 and 1 respectfully. But if you're on low end, you should set these to 4 and 3 respectfully. As default, these are set as 3 and 2 respectfully which I do recommend everyone not to change at all unless you're really low end or if you're obsessed with visibility. The next functions are CL Ragdoll Max Count and CL Ragdoll Self Collision. These controls how many dead bodies you'll see and how they react with each other before it disappears. The values for Ragdoll Max Count is 8 being high and 0 being low and the values for Ragdoll Self Collision is 1 being enabled and 0 for disabled. The next function is Matte Force Anisotropic. This is basically asking you if you want to force an anisotropic filtering with the values 16 being the highest and 0 for disabled. With anisotropic filtering on, this prevents blurring and distortion in textures when viewed at an angle or at a distance. Basically makes things look sharper at a low performance cost. I set my value to 1 which is the lowest anisotropic filtering billionaire which I recommend everyone to do. But to be honest, I'm not sure if we can disable this by just setting this to zero because I've been testing for a while now and I can't see any noticeable difference. The next function is Mat Map Linear. This is actually a trillionaire filtering that works hand in hand with Force and ISO, which will cost more GPU power, with the values being one for enabled and zero for disabled. The next function is Stream Memory. I think most of us already know what this is, but I'm going to explain it anyways. So this controls how much space you want to allocate for storing texture, with 80,000 being 1 gigabyte. Of course, you can set this to zero to get a slight performance boost and an increase in visibility because everything is so low poly looking. But in my opinion, if you have at least over 4 gigabytes of GPU memory, you should set this to at least 80,000 or 160,000. So if you have a PC that's capable, then just add a little quality. It won't hurt you as much as you think. But if it's for competitive reasons or performance reasons, playing at zero will give you that edge. The next function is Matte Pigment. This is basically the texture quality controller of the game, with 4 being the lowest and 1 being the highest. So if you're struggling with performance, set this to 4. On the other hand, setting this to zero is something I haven't quite understood myself yet. But from all my testing, I would say if you're using above 160,000 stream memory, you should set this to zero. The next function is Particle CPU Level. By the name suggests, it reduces the quality of particles. So if you've been hit with a Horizon Q or Thermite, this aids you a bit. Not sure how far these values can override to, but Apex probably patched that before anyone catched on to it. So the values are 2 for high and 0 for low. The next functions are R create model decals and R decals. So these functions control any visual marking left on a surface after impact, like bullet marks, grenade marks, rampart paint, hop up marks, etc. Setting these to zero will def give a boost in performance. But if you want to mark something saucy on the wall for your teammates to see, then set these values to 
1 and 256 respectfully but if you're a normal individual then say this is 04 disabled the next function is our load switch scale this function changes the distance of lod models or textures so basically this is the quality control of forward objects and models unfortunately changing this to anything lower than 0.6 doesn't work anymore so you're better off just leaving this as it is but if you do want to crank this up a bit the values are 1 for high and 0.6 for low the next functions are shadow enable shadow depth dimming when shadow depth operates factor max and shadow max dynamic now all of these functions are for the quality and movement of spot shadows in the game these are dark areas that are formed on models to give it more detail and dark areas casted by structures so the values for these are shadow enable one for enabled and zero for disabled shadow depth dimming min 512 for high and 0 for disabled. Shadow depth operates factor max 3 for high and 0 for disabled. And shadow max dynamic is set to 4 for high and 0 for disabled. So for low end users and users that want that edge on enemies, then set all these to 0. The next function is SSAO enabled. So this means screen space ambient occlusion. To my understanding, this is the type of shadow that makes 3D objects look more realistic. It's a type of shading and rendering technique used to calculate how exposed each point in a scene is to ambient lighting. The values for this function uses 1 for enabled and 0 for disabled, which I'm not entirely sure about, which we learn when I talk about the next function, SSAO downsample. Now this function reduces the resolution of the ambient occlusion which in return will reduce the load on the GPU, but makes the effect less detailed. So for users that want more performance, you're actually benefiting from this function. Now you must be wondering, if the function SSAO enable is set to zero, will SSAO down sample still even work? Now the answer to that is, I think it works, but I'm not 100% sure. Because after I finished tweaking all my video settings to the lowest in-game, I opened up my video config after, and I saw SSAO enable set to zero, while SSAO done sample set to three. So you had me thinking, does zero really mean it's disabled or low? What I recommend you guys to do is, is to set this value at three, because if SSAO enable is actually disabled, then this value won't mean anything. But if it is set to low, it will give you a boost in performance at the cost of visibility. But if you're all about sharpness and quality, you can set this to zero. The next functions are DVS enable, DVS GPU frame time main, and DVS GPU frame time max. Now these functions are the adaptive resolution FPS target controller in the video settings, which will dynamically lower the resolution to try and maintain the desired frame rate. If you're a high end user, I recommend you to disable this by setting the function DVS enable to zero. The other functions, GPU frame time min and max values, doesn't matter or won't work while DVS enable is disabled. You will gain better visibility by doing this. But for low end users, you can greatly benefit from this by using this formula, which you'll see on the screen, to calculate your GPU frame time values for your target or current frame rate. You will have a smoother Apex experience at the cost of quality. The next functions are last display width and last display height. I generally do not know what these functions are for, but what I do know is that whatever you set this function to, it will not impact your visibility or performance in game. So the best advice I can give is to set this to the resolution of your monitor. Also, please do not get confused. If you are setting a custom resolution or if you want to change your resolution, these functions are not what you're supposed to be tinkering with. The next function is no window border. This controls whether or not you want to play Apex in borderless window mode, with the values being 1 for enable and 0 for disable. So I've heard from some players that you can actually get a FPS boost from enabling this. I've only tried this for a little bit and to be honest, it felt a lot smoother. This might be a placebo effect, but I'm never going to try it again. I prefer playing my games in full screen. The next function is full screen. This controls whether or not you want to play Apex in full screen, with the values being 1 for enabled and 0 for disabled. Pretty straightforward. The next functions are 
default res and default res height. This function will show you your current width and height respectfully that you use in game. You can also use this to set your custom resolutions, which is a whole different topic for itself I will get into. The next function is volumetric lighting. This function controls whether sunbeams are enabled to simulate light scattering in the air, with the values being 1 for enabled and 0 for disabled. This function gives the environment a sense of realism because of the effect it has on light as it bends and bounces off surfaces at the cost of GPU power. The next function is volumetric fog. This is basically the same thing as volumetric lighting, but this time we're dealing with fogs or smokes. The next function is matte vsync mode. This function controls whether or not you want to turn on vsync, with the values being 1 for enabled and 0 for being disabled. Of course, if you are a competitive gamer and you always want that edge, you want to avoid this by disabling it. But if you are low end and you are suffering from screen tearing, this can actually help you out a lot if you enable it. The next function is matte back buffer count. This function stores texture data temporarily so it can be rendered more seamlessly, with the values being 2 as the highest and 0 for being disabled. Of course, if you're playing with 0 stream memory, you should set this to 0. But if you are playing this stream memory, you can set this to 1 to reduce flickering when loading textures. Of course, you can set this to 0 as well for no buffer, which will then try to match with their VRAM, but there's really any performance difference if you do so. The next function is matte anti-LS mode. This function removes jagged edges from models and structures. Basically anything in the game with an edge that's jagged will be removed, with values being 12 for high and 0 for disabled. Now I'm pretty sure almost 70% of PC players have this turned off, because it's claimed and proven by many pro players that turning this off will give better visibility on enemies, which at the same time gives a boost in performance. It's like the best of both worlds. The next functions are CSM enabled, CSM coverage, CSM cascade res. These functions control the quality and detail of all shadows produced by the sun. The values are CSM enabled, 1 for enabled and 0 for disabled, CSM coverage, 1 for low and 2 for high, and CSM cascade res, 128 for low and 1024 for high. Now, people always say to set 0 for CSM enable to remove all shadows. But when I enter in the game after doing that, I'm still seeing shadows, which means there's some functions that we think we disable by setting to 0, but really we might just be setting it to low. Functions I think are responsible for this are SSAO enable, SSAO downsample, CSM coverage, CSM cascade res, and new shadow settings. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I really do believe that. So do what you will with that information. The next function is fade disk scale. This function controls the distance at which models and textures are fully rendered, with 0.1 being the lowest and 1 being the highest. I think you can go higher than 1, but I think it doesn't make any sense you do so since 1 was set as default. So if you're looking for FPS boost for the cost of quality, you can tweak this down a bit. The next function is DVS Super Sample Enable. This function dynamically raises the render resolution if the game is running faster than the target frame rate, with the values 1 for enabled and 0 for being disabled. So this is basically the opposite of the function DVS Enable. I recommend everyone to disable these, but if you're on a low-end PC, you should really give the DVS functions a try. But if it's not to your liking, you should try copying your FPS instead. The next function is new shadow settings. Now, this is a function that is very new and unknown, so my best advice would be to leave this as default with the value set to 1. I've tried playing with the value set to 0, but I don't see any noticeable difference. Or maybe I haven't tested it enough. Who knows? The next function is gamma. This is the brightness control in game with the highest value being 1.7 and the lowest being 0.25. The next function is config version. Now as the name suggests, this function is just to identify the video config version, I think. The last function is DX version check timestamp. I'm not 100% sure about this, but I think 
this has to do with login data that's the only idea I have about this one so this is the end of the video guys i hope this helped a lot of you guys to have an idea of what each function does so you guys can tweak your video configs with more confidence as i said earlier if any brainiac comes across this video and can give more info on some of these functions i welcome it fully because you're not only helping me but everyone who stumbles across this video as well but anyways please remember to like comment and subscribe if you found this video helpful and i'll see you legends in the next one Ain't no way this blow me up, right? Ain't no way. Can the ping worse, just puffy? Any idea? Let's move this way. Okay, just raise the ass. Okay. You stay here. Okay. Dead. So what? Oh, it's a guy on me. Oh my God, guys. Can you guys look at me? You guys, need to look at me. Come back to me. No way you fell, party. He know you fell. I knock one. Watch the steps here. Yeah, let me get that res. No matter what. I'm gonna stick the right heel here. We have to walk up on that. Like no matter what. I'm gonna peek from the other side. Not about the guy. Let's see that guy. Holy shit. Let's do it. Alright. Got a bunch of teams here. I'm gonna hit the hit back here. Oh, that's funny. Kill for fucking shit on man, don't. <laughs> anyway, I don't need fucking TVs, man. Fucking sit down. <laughs> I'm 
like an octane on me. It's a guy here with a wingman, a solo guy. That's a solo guy, full team. We'll let them rest here. Place them shields on. Hold on. Yeah, kill there. Oh. That guy just still on height? Oh my fucking god, man. That guy was up the entire time, you know. Did a fucking move on muscle. He's so flesh. There he is. Guy in zone somewhere. Oh, yeah, I heard someone, man. <laughs> 